risk reduction. When we did our calendar planning last year, we joked what we were going to call this, how to stay away from choosing between an orange jumpsuit or stripes. <laughs> in all seriousness, I think we oftentimes come across um, something in the course of a transaction that we just aren't quite sure the right thing to do. And we all, of course, want to do the right thing. We want to do the best thing that we can do to represent our client and to represent the transaction. So with us today, we have two special guests. We have first, Rochelle Cohen Mossler, who is the Chief Legal Counsel for the IAR. She'll be presented first, and then we'll have Tom Rankert from my board, Director of the Business Support Services, to talk about some of the brand new BLC guidelines that just went into play that do impact all of us. So first up, we have Rochelle Cohen Mossler.
higher cost, of course, is going to make homes hard, if not impossible, to sell. The important thing here to remember for all of you, if you are working with a buyer or seller of property in a flood area, or that might be in a flood zone, you need to let your clients know that these insurance subsidies are phasing out, increasing the cost to owners for flood insurance. There is model language and a lot more information about this on the NAR website. They even have a template for model language that agents can use to make this disclosure. And there's a website there. How much does this subsidy phase out affect Indiana homeowners? You're all thinking, oh, this probably really doesn't affect me, it doesn't affect us that much. DNR has told us that 50% of Hoosiers with flood insurance receive the subsidy. It's going to be over, I think, 21,000 homes that will be affected by this. Okay. All right, moving right along. Property listing <coughs> scams. You're all familiar with Craigslist, uh, Zillow, the issues where houses for sale have mysteriously shown up as houses for rent. Fraud schemes. Has anyone dealt with that situation here? Yes. We deal with it all the time. We have probably about 50 rentals end up at any given time, and at least 25% of them get copied and then scammed on Craigslist. Rentalhouses.com, um, they all show up. So. This is a very serious issue nationwide as, as well as here in Indiana. Uh, I'm, I'm happy to say that there was an individual. Um, well, first of all, let me say that generally this is not done by realtors or real estate licensees. But I have to tell you that it did happen with a real estate licensee. In this case here, this is, this is a real case. Uh, we have something called Violation Station that comes out every quarter and, and indicates what punishments realtors or real estate licensees have received due to violations. Well, there was an individual with a real estate license that was falsely representing properties for rent that were listed for sale by other agents. He would meet potential tenants at the properties, have them sign lease agreements, collect the security deposits, and then they would find out later you know, he had nothing to do with that home or he was impersonating you know, the person, the realtor that actually had that lease. <coughs> His license, I'm happy to say, was permanently revoked. He's in prison now. Uh, but it, but it, is an, it, it is an issue, at least we are trying to deal with it. Um, next slide. To prevent this, anyone's guess, but one suggestion has been to place a Google alert on each listing so that you'll be alerted if one of the property addresses shows up on the web. You also need to alert the Attorney General's office and or the FBI. That's the only way that this is going to happen. Can, can you tell me what have you all done to try to combat this? Really, our marketing person in our office just flags Craigslist ads and flags Zillow ads and anything that gets their hands on it. Usually, we do we keep a good uh, search of our properties on a daily basis to see how many times they come up. And it's just a copy and paste of ad with a different brand number on that machine. Okay. Uh, regarding the Google Alert, uh, one thing that we've noticed. Maybe uh, Main Street, but the list is Main Drive. That sort of a thing. So when you put your Google Alert in, uh, you can just put it in as one, two, three, four, five, Main. You can drop off the street or the drive. That will pick up a few more of them. Uh, is, is what, you know, what we're All right. Moving this was generally seen as a Craigslist issue, but recently there have been quite a few articles where Zillow uh, people have been scraping Zillow listings. Well, and hot pad, I believe, is another one. So, um, you know, if you if you can, a Google alert might be a good idea just to kind of keep an eye on that, make sure someone's not impersonating. 